So arguments can be formal or informal. Um, informal arguments are the kind you make every day in natural language. Uh, formal arguments, we try and write down all of our steps. Um, they're more or less the same thing in both kinds of arguments. It's really important to state clearly what your assumptions are, uh, state every uh, conclusion you're drawing clearly, and give a justification for it. Uh, organize your arguments so that uh, you can think about one chunk at a time and check it. Uh, and most importantly, write everything out in enough detail that it's uh, possible to check it. So uh, the lecture notes for today talk about propositional logic in particular. Uh, this is a version of logic where we have uh, variables that are true or false uh, and statements about those variables. Uh, those statements use connectives like uh, and and or and not and implies. Um, and so you could have something like, uh, uh, you know, man implies mortal. And uh, then given these statements, we can compute new statements using inference rules. So uh, maybe the most, Im uh, most famous inference rule is modus ponens. Uh, if Socrates is a man and all men are mortal, then Socrates must be mortal. Um, you can also, uh, another, another good one is proving a lemma. So in order to prove a lemma, you make some assumptions. You show that they imply a conclusion. Uh, and in a number of steps, and then at the end you conclude that those assumptions imply that conclusion. Uh, and there's lots of inference rules, and the, there's a list of useful ones in the notes. So um, I'm not going to go through all of the ones in the notes in detail, but uh, I figured it would be helpful to have me go through an example of a proof. So here's a, uh, here's a proof. What this proof shows is that uh, if you assume that peanut butter and jelly uh, together make a sandwich, then you can conclude that uh, if you give me peanut butter, then later if you give me jelly, I'll be able to make a sandwich. Right? And the way we can do that the way we can figure out what this proof shows is we take a look at the assumptions. There's only one at the top level of this proof. And we take a look at the last, um, the last conclusion that we drew. Um, sorry, the last, um, the last conclusion that we drew. Uh, and you say that the assumptions, if there's more than one assumption, you connect them together with and. You say that the assumptions, that's right here, together imply the conclusion, which is this right here. All right. And uh, how does this proof work? Well, it makes, uh, it makes use of two lemmas. And we've done um, indentation to show where the lemmas start and end. So the innermost lemma is here. And then there's a, um, an outer lemma here. Right? And so let's take a look at the, um, the innermost lemma here, right? So in this lemma, we assume jelly. Um, we, pull in, um, uh, we pull in an assumption peanut butter from outside the lemma. Now, uh, lemmas obey scoping rules just like computer code. So because this lemma is inside this lemma, I can use assumptions that are made outer, uh, in the outer lemma. So here, this assumption peanut butter goes here. This, we already assume jelly, that goes there. And now we're using an inference rule called and introduction, right? Peanut butter and jelly are both separately true, so peanut butter and jelly is true. Then this here, right, this looks exactly like this in the earlier assumption. And so I, I apply modus ponens. Peanut butter and jelly implies sandwich, and I can conclude sandwich, right? And now we end this lemma. The only assumptions we made within the lemma are j. And the conclusion of the lemma is this one. So we get jelly implies sandwich, right? Now let's take a look at the, um, the outer lemma, this one right here, right? In this letter, we assumed peanut butter. Then we uh, proved this lemma that shows that jelly implies sandwich. So now I can close this lemma. My assumptions are just peanut butter. And the conclusion is that jelly implies a sandwich. And now I'm done with my proof. And like I said before, we assumed in the proof this statement, and we concluded this statement, which go here 
and here. So now it would be good to think about uh, how to do a much simpler proof on your own. So I'll pause for a second while you try and think about uh, how to do this proof. And if you want more time to think about it, please just pause the video. And uh, the way this proof is going to work, well, we're going to assume that uh, it, we're going to assume we're going to assume A and B, right? How do we know to assume that? Well, we're trying to prove something that starts from A and B, and so we'll assume that. Uh, then we're going to conclude using the commutativity of AND, uh, right? So we'll call this number one. Statement number two is B and A. And it follows from statement one by the fact that AND is commutative. And now we're done with the proof, right? We assumed this, we concluded this, and so at the end we get that A and B implies B and A. Not a very complicated argument, uh, but it shows how to use uh, some of the rules of propositional logic to reach a desired conclusion.